the teams I played for. I started over here in uh, Oakland, California, the Raiders. And then I ended up with the Cowboys. That's America's team, the biggest Dallas Cowboys. One of the biggest teams in the, in, in uh, the yeah, country. Yeah, yeah, they're probably the most popular team. Like they, when we travel, we travel big. And then, uh, yeah, I ended with the, the Atlanta Falcons. For me, some of the experiences across different cultures and different backgrounds of sports have been some of the most positive things in like building my perspective mm. and treating different people equally. And no, but, not only, but not only just internally in terms of like the players, yeah. with, the, with the fans. Yeah. Because when you, when you, when we spoke about exactly. singing the national anthem. Exactly. And the goosebumps that you get. Yeah, yeah. But for us, we're so focused and you don't see anything else. Because people say to you, ah, oh, how's you play in front of all these people? Like, yeah. I say, you can't even see it. You can't, I don't notice. Yeah, like, yeah but then when you look, when you, if you, if you step back and you actually looked at the different cultures and the people together. Yeah. Hugging, singing the national anthem, it brings, it's, 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 it's powerful. That's breaking barriers. Breaking barriers is powerful. My dad's an immigrant. He come from Trinidad. And the only team he could watch growing up was Manchester United. But then he moved, to, he moved to England when I think he was about 18. It's funny how like an immigrant who comes from a completely different background, mm. almost like a farm, you know, he came from rural Trinidad to, to London. Mm. I remember like <laughs> when England in the World Cup, when we scored a goal, my dad like tried to do a cartwheel in it and he didn't do it, but he like shook the whole house. <laughs> and I just seeing the emotion come out of him, yes, you, it and really like, wow. like inspired me to be like, you know, I wanted to be a football player, like a uh, soccer in America, but I wanted to be a football player. That was my dream, but I never had the footwork, man. So I can't imagine the pressure mm. that you felt as a, I, I've been a professional athlete, but there's levels to everything. Yeah, there's levels, but you know what, obviously, when you get to that, thing, that sort of level, yeah. I think there's always going to be pressure. Yes, being an athlete, a professional athlete, and I'm sure you could say that, like, you could probably attest to this, is like, it, it taught me like discipline, discipline and yeah. accountability. Accountability, and yeah. And just being responsible for your teammate. Like, you never want to let everybody down. Yeah. Because, and you, most of all, you don't want to let yourself down. Yeah. With me, it was, it was something that I've always wanted to do as a kid. Um, and yeah. I don't know where it came from, <laughs> uh, maybe my mum, in terms of like yeah. my mindset, even from like really young and that sort of like that drive and that hunger, I'm going to get there. Strong I'm willed. Do, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do whatever it takes. I'm willing to do, yeah. I'm willing to do things that other people weren't willing to do. That was yeah. around about the same age group as me. Yeah. I lived on an estate. I grew up yeah. in, in Canning Town, East London. Oh uh, yeah? Rough. I used to play football with men that were older than me. Yeah. Um, and, and even times where I just have a ball on my own. I yeah. just practice. It was just football, Matt, I was obsessed. It's funny how like, uh, I think I can relate to every part of your story. It's amazing that like you said about your dad, you know, the World yeah. Cup's on, yeah. like he can walk into a pub yeah. and it's like, you're, we're all together. You're English. You're English, now, today, you're all together, but here, it's not, it's from Trinidad. Yeah, yeah, today, exactly. it's from Trinidad, yeah. you've got your English shirt on, yeah. you're English, yeah. and we're, we're all together yeah. for 90 minutes, we're supporting England. Yeah. You know, and, and then it's so, and, yeah. And, it's and he was proud of that. He's proud, And yeah. he felt accepted. Accepted, yeah. And for him, it was a badge of honour to be accepted by what he felt was one of the best countries, countries. And the, one of the best places to be in the world. And yeah. he always kind of carried that with him. So yeah, I mean, like growing up, I yeah. didn't really experience much yeah. racism, but obviously later on, yeah. uh, I remember like one game in particular, I remember I played the, against Spain for England yeah. at the Bernabeu in Madrid. Mm. Right, so you can imagine, right? The magnitude of that game anyway, because yeah, it was yeah. a friendly, but we're playing against Spain, and not only that as well, it was yeah, my yeah. first time going to Madrid, playing the stadium, and then, and then yeah. obviously a lot of the black players were getting booze. But at the time, I didn't even, didn't I didn't notice. notice. Yeah, because you're, you're, so you're locked in, you're locked in. But I remember when, and yeah. then Sean Wright Phillips, remember Sean Wright Phillips getting the ball, and then experienced that, and I was a bit like, that was the first time. Yeah. And I couldn't understand it, because I thought, this is yeah. such a, like a great football nation. Yeah. You know, with unbelievable players. Yeah. For me, that was, that was tough. Yeah. That was tough and that, and you know, because there's pressure anyway, playing at that yeah, sort of level. Yeah. So to experience that was, was difficult, but in terms yeah. of growing up, I was lucky I didn't really experience much. I can't say I experienced much, and I think that that is kind of along, it kind of follows along the power of sports itself. Like, I, um, it really doesn't matter where you come from. If your goal is to win, we want the best people. Yeah, that's it. It's also important to look at how far we've come. Yeah. And, and, and what, you know, has been, just what people like yourself, mm. athletes who you probably like, you didn't have to do anything out of your way to, to break barriers, no. except be good at football. 
And to me, that's more powerful mm. than any, like, you know, billboard, like, movie, documentaries, like, things like that. To yeah. me, just having kids of all backgrounds, all races, watching you play, mm. growing up, saying, I want to be like Jermaine Defoe. Obviously, when uh, Saka, Rashford and um, Sancho, when obviously when they missed the penalties, and obviously you just sort of, like, know, if we're being totally honest, you sort of, like, know the sort of, like, what's going to happen next. So predictable and that, and obviously they got racially abused and stuff like that, and uh, it got dealt with, which is a step going forward, which is a, which, which is a positive. But of course I'm going to say that. Of course, I've heard other people say, yeah, it needs to be, the punishment needs to be severe and stuff like that. And even on the terraces, when people are being racist and they get caught, they should never go to a football match again, all that sort of stuff. And that, you know, we're moving in the right direction, which is important. I remember I was in Atlanta in the States at the time. I thought the exact same thing. I said, yeah. uh-oh, yeah. they're in for yeah, a hell yeah, of a they're going to get it. Yeah. And it's funny, yeah. it kind of, the way it kind of went out, it almost had the reverse effect where the whole, a whole huge community of people started to build them up and saying, like, you three are, like, you know, have done us the country proud. Yeah. Which, was, which shows, like, a lot of the people in this country are, like, empathetic to these guys yeah. with the country on their shoulders. Yeah. But, like, for me, I, I, you know, and I said it to you, now that it's, I've kind of, it's been some time since then, I looked at it in the sense of like, England team in the Euro came down to three black players. It rested on their shoulders. Yeah. And it, it kind of just, if you look at it in a bigger picture in a sense, like in a nutshell, it, it's almost like a real representation of how far we've come yeah, yeah, yeah. in some sense. There, were, there was a time when that opportunity was never there. Never there. And no. they were, there was never any representation, right? No, exactly. And I, I like to look at the things of like, if you take every black player who's kind of come up and the ones who've been given opportunities by others who mm. aren't black, mm. who believed in them because of their talent, yeah, exactly. right? So it's not yeah. just us, it's not just black people, it's white people too, it's, it's a joint effort. Yeah. But if you look at it, the state of the country now, our soccer team rested on, the players, rested on the shoulders of three black players and it shows the kind of value and how far we've come. But if you're going deeper into it, people speak about obviously the country coming together, you know, just missed so close to win a European Championship, which would have been massive. Can you imagine the party and stuff, right? Saka missed the penalty. He got yeah. the abuse. Yeah. But then, yeah, but when you actually think about the Euros that summer, yeah, yeah, it was great to think about. It. But for me, what, it was, what was even better is the fact that how everyone came together, and you can it talk was. about England getting to a final, but not only yeah. that England gets to a final, yeah. but the way it brought the country together, it did, something it like did. I've never seen before. And I've, it, I've been it, to like European Championship, I've been to World Cup and that, but it did. on that sort of level, Going back to his club, yeah. the, the the flowers, the the cards, and all that, and, yeah, and what that what yeah. that does for a young player going forward. Yeah. Because can can you imagine like like can you imagine taking a penalty in a final at Wembley to win I, I and couldn't, you miss? I couldn't. I couldn't. Even I couldn't. if you took a, even if you took I a penalty couldn't. training and you missed. Yeah, yeah. So you can imagine, uh, but the fact that everyone came together, I couldn't. All different backgrounds, we all came together to support this young player. Yeah. For me, that was one of the best things that happened that summer. I did an event at. Yeah. Uh, next door to a, a, a uni, a school. Yeah. And my wife actually said to me, she goes, I can't believe how much work the club does in the community, like how much yeah. the club gives back. She was really taken back, she was surprised. And I said, it's always been the case, yeah, but people has. maybe don't talk about it. Yeah. And, it, and yeah. even when I speak about, in terms of like, what, we, what we're doing today, like the, the like, like massive brands in, in, in world sport, like, the, like you know, Nike, the NFL, yeah, comes yeah, together yeah, yeah. to help these kids you know, in the community yeah. is massive. Yeah. And you want to talk about, like, even like with terms of the football club, like yeah. black coaches, myself, yeah, Ledley yeah, King, yeah, Chris yeah, Powell, yeah. you know, Ugo Egiog. You know, when I first right. signed for Tottenham, I remember Chris, Chris Uton was at the club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's amazing. Trailblazers, man. Trailblazers. Yeah. It's important to highlight those who have come before mm. and who have set the stage. These black coaches who have worked despite yeah. the situation they were in years ago. Years ago. Where things weren't like yeah. today. Paved the and way they, for us. they didn't have the opportunities no, that no. we have, like that kids have today. And yeah. that some, you know, people who want to get into coaching have today. And so it kind of like, to me, it's almost like a testament to them. Testament, It's yeah. a testament to them to say like, you know, I want to get into coaching. That's a realistic path for you to take. Yeah, exactly. Because and, this, yeah, yeah. I, I did it. I got given an opportunity and they see that and then they'd be like, okay then. I'm, I, I, yeah. Cause maybe you don't know, maybe they'll, probably thought, mm, I don't know if I should do that. But then yeah. when you see someone else that's from the same background, they've done it. Get given the opportunity, like you're like, I can do it. Yeah, I can do I, this. I can do that. Yeah. And that's that, that is exactly what happens. You know, one thing I, I think um, it is important to say and just that's affected my perspective. Sports is like one of the few places where once you cross that line, we're all judged 
upon the same... Just the performance. B by your performance. Just the performance. And there are a lot of different parts of professional industries, like fields and that, that aren't judged like that. You know, you, you, you don't afford it that equal opportunity. And I think yeah. it is. We all want to strive for being based off the merit of your skill and yeah. your ability. And I feel like, for me, sports represents that. Yeah. It represents that. It doesn't matter. You could be a poor black kid from the inner city yeah. or you could be a rich white kid from the suburbs. Yeah. It really doesn't matter where yeah. you came from. Yeah. All that matters is that are you going to help us win? Yeah. And to me, that's what sports represents. And that's why I think sports is like American football and soccer, like two of the most powerful vehicles yeah. for change coming from being a black kid from inner city London. I've had the opportunity to kind of play with kids from rural Mississippi. The fact that when you get together and you realise you're both fighting for a common goal, which common is to, goal. Win, to win, you start to realise that you're really not that different. And there's yeah. no way in the world we would have ever been colleagues mm. had it not been for that game, for this sport. These, some of these guys who have, grew up, who have grown up in completely different environments have, have become some of my closest friends. Mm. And I felt like that's the power of sport. Yeah. It breaks barriers.